Hi everyone, and welcome to today's Red Hat webinar. Before we get started with today's presentation, there are a few items to quickly mention. You should see a taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Each icon is assigned to a particular element of today's webinar. If you're not sure what the icon does, hop over the icon with your mouse, and a box will appear to tell you the function. Also, next to the slides window, you should see a blank Ask a Question box that allows you to type a question. After you type the question, click Submit to send it to our presenters. Feel free to submit questions throughout the webinar, and our presenters will address as many as possible following the presentation. You can submit any technical questions related to the webinar platform here. Please close down other browser windows or applications that might be splitting your bandwidth, including VPNs, as these might interfere with the audio or video stream. If you experience any connectivity issues, please refresh your browser. Today's session is being recorded, and all registrants will receive an email within one to two days of the event with a link to view this presentation on demand. Now I'm going to hand it over to today's first speaker so we can get started with the presentation. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar on Manage Risk and Improve Operational Efficiency for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Today we're going to spend time talking about Red Hat Insights and some of the services that help you to manage the risk and improve your operational efficiency. My name is John Spinks. I am Technical Marketing Manager for Insights, and joining me today is Rob Williams. I'm going to turn it over for him uh, for introductions and to take you through the first few sets of slides. Rob? Great. Thanks, John. Hey, folks. My name is Rob Williams. I'm a Product Manager for Red Hat Insights. I've had the pleasure of working on this product for uh, several years now. And so today, um, we'll be diving into a couple of subjects. First, I've had the opportunity to talk to many of our customers. I'm going to share a few of the observations that we've seen that are causing efficiency, efficient, efficiency sorry, challenges in this area. After that, I'll dive into Red Hat Insights. I'm going to talk a little bit about it and how it can help address or reduce some of these challenges. Um, I also think it's important to note here that it's not just a matter of the technology, but it's also how can some of this fit into your existing workflows so that you can go and leverage them. John is then going to dive into a live demo of Red Hat Insights, walking through some of these use cases. And then lastly, we're going to cover any questions that you have. So if you do have any, please submit your questions using that Q&A feature. Um, Place them for later, and we'll try to get to as many as time permits here. All right, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this slide. And primarily, it's, it's because the, the problem here that we've been seeing is to meet customers' needs, and to keep up with the pace of innovation for those customers, we're really seeing businesses are having to move at extremely rapid rates to stay competitive these days. Now, while the business is needing to move rapidly, the underlying technology that's needed to support the strategic direction for that business is needing to move at even more exponential rates just to keep up with this demand. So as a result, we're seeing various responses to this uh, to really support this line of business. We're seeing infrastructures having to be spun up at rates and sizes that we haven't previously seen. Right? This is causing the landscape to pretty much change basis here. We're seeing expansion of what might have been previously on-premise deployments are now having to be moved into cloud-based or even multi-cloud infrastructures, which is now becoming even more distributed and widespread. Legacy systems, which might have been around for ages now and we've been maintaining them for a while, might now need to finally reach a point where they're having to be migrated or transitioned over to new technologies to support this. And lastly, a mixture of hardware or operating systems or various combination of workloads we're finding are having to work together in ways that might not have previously been done before. So we're kind of on the bleeding edge of, of innovation here as well. Meanwhile, while all this is being done, we're introducing additional complexity into our lives. And this additional complexity is only continuing to grow. So we're having to use more of our time and more of our resources just to keep up and minimize the risk that's been introduced here. And I'm using the vaguely, and I'll jump into that more into a bit here, but I don't know about you, but I know having more time and having more resources, whether that's personnel, budget, or et cetera, is not something I often see having plenty of just standing around immediately available here, right? And we're seeing this when we survey our customers. Um, so this survey was taken last August. Um, this was done by Qualtrics and Red Hat, where we asked customers, what are they doing to optimize their infrastructure? And the number one top priority that we see here is aligning the IT to the business needs and priorities. Meanwhile, we're seeing other things in this area like streamlining processes, standardization, best practices, consolidation, 
all of these optimizations are going to help you be more efficient, stable, and save costs, but they're also going to take time and resources to implement. So we're starting to reach this point where we need to support the business. We want to become more efficient, but we can't just throw more people at it. This is where the optimization is, is really key. And to be efficient, we need to leverage technology and automation wherever we can, or even better, get ahead of these risks. Because if we can spend time essentially here, less, less time firefighting and you know, responding reactively to the problems that we're encountering, by being proactive, we can continue to optimize and focus on what the business needs us to focus on and move forward to support really that strategic direction here. And so I briefly mentioned earlier how we're moving at faster rate and faster scale, but we're also adding complexity. And ultimately here, complexity adds risk. And now when it comes to risk in the infrastructure, it might be different for you and your organization, depending on the areas that you care about or the maturity of your organization, right? These risks could be things such as um, falling out of compliance with industry regulations that you're being held to, or um, configuring a system in a way that's, you know, unknowingly or accidentally going to cause problematic conditions for you in the future. These are going to be things that are going to cause problems like a performance degradation, um, falling out of support. Your applications aren't going to be working well together, right? Or this could be critical things like leaving your critical infrastructure unpatched, which is going to cause issues like outages or your security vulnerability. And any of these can be damaging to your organization. They're going to cost you time, they're going to cost you money, and they can also impact your reputation whether that's internally or externally. And so to be more efficient and effective here, we need to get ahead of these risks. And rather than dealing with the adverse effects and when they blow up, we need to, to get them ahead before you know, they blow up and we have to then give them attention. So there's two main areas that we recommend from a lifestyle, life cycle perspective here, um, which are great opportunities for really addressing these types of risks. So the first one I'm going to cover here is really that early life cycle. Um, this is infrastructure that might, whether that's going to be your pre-production environment, um, that's going to be beginning to standardize a golden image or a build. This is really where you're beginning to set that initial foundation, right? So in these stages, change is really cheap. There's no business critical applications that are running on it yet. There's no stakeholders that you're going to have to go negotiate for. Um, for a patching window or downtime. Um, customers aren't going to be impacted here, right? And this typically gives you a little bit more flexibility about what you can do here and the rate that you can do it. So really, let's take this opportunity in this early life cycle to spend a little bit more time and leverage additional technology in this space that's really going to help you harden your initial setup before we go and push it out the door to production. The other part of this is on the other side here, right? So this is going to be once that changes out in production, it's not finished, right? Things are going to be changing over time, whether that's the configuration of the host has changed, um, someone has made some changes. There might be new patches that come available from vendors. Um, other things could encounter, such as new problematic conditions are identified or new requirements infrastructure from your business, right? So. We need to keep this infrastructure up and running and operational to support it, but we really don't want to babysit it. I don't have a resource that I can sit in front of this and say, make sure that this is constantly running and don't go down, right? There's other things that my team is being asked for. So leveraging additional tools in this area is really going to help you identify and prioritize critical things that need to be addressed. And if we can know that ahead of time and we can have plan around it, well, then I can put that into a planned maintenance window or planned downtime that I already have scheduled. So it's not interrupting my business, and I'm addressing the problems that need to get addressed here. And that's really why we designed Red Hat Insights to be one of these tools that you can help identify and address these risks in your environment here. So Red Hat Insights is a software as a service product that's available to you to help you manage your Red Hat Enterprise Linux environment, right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to proactively identify, prioritize, and remediate risks that we find within your environment. So if you're a Red Hat Enterprise Linux user, this is included as part of your Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, subscription. So it's available to you today. There's no additional cost here. And with it being software as a service, there's no additional infrastructure that you have to stand up 
right? There's no applications that you need to manage. We really don't want you having to manage your management software here. All you have to do is you just register your RHEL host to Insights. Setup takes literally less than a minute. And it's also available to be deployed at scale here with automation. So you can easily go and widespread, uh, deploy it widespreadly across your production environment, your pre-prod environment, however you see fit here. Now, once your system is set up and registered and connected with Red Hat Insights, we have a wide range of applications that are built around specific use cases that are available to you here. All of these applications are going to be using the same fundamentals of providing what we call prescriptive analytics. And so what this is, is when a problem is identified, we're not just going to have you give you an alert and tell you about it, right? Um, we're going to help you act on the steps that you need to remediate this problem, pretty much taking the guesswork out of the equation. Now, when we're helping you remediate it, that's either going to be via manual uh, intervention. Here are the steps that you need to do based off of how this system is configured. Or you can leverage automation using automated generated playbooks that we have here. And so just quickly going over the services that we have available for you here. Advisor, um, this is going to be evaluating the underlying configuration of your REL host. It's going to identify known problematic conditions, and we're going to recommend best practices that are focusing on the availability performance, stability of this host. All of these recommend recommendations that we're providing to you here are going to be based off the years of knowledge that we have as Red Hat of supporting you as our customers and our product here. Vulnerability is going to be assessing, prioritizing, and reporting on known common vulnerabilities and exposures, or also known as CVEs. And these might be of interest to your system administration team or your product security team. Compliance is going to be monitoring you against regulatory compliance standards that you, as your industry, or your company are adhered to. These are things such as PCI DSS. Uh, this might be HIPAA in the healthcare industry or uh, standards such as DISASIG. We have Drift. Drift is going to enable you to compare the configurations of a host or a set of hosts to one of another. So this is really key when you want to quickly identify change or drift from one system to another. This could be used from a troubleshooting perspective or even an optimization perspective. Additionally, we can set up baselines within Drift to quickly identify an alert against Drift from predefined configurations over time. Policies is going to let you define and set your own policies or conditions to automatically be identified and alerted against. And lastly, Patch is going to identify and prioritize Red Hat product and advisories to help you keep your system patched and up to date. And so we introduced Red Hat Insights as part of this Red Hat subscription. Again, as I mentioned, if you're using RHEL, it's part of your subscription. Um, and we did this two years ago at Summit, starting with what was now called the Advisor Service. Um, at this past year's Summit, we expanded what Red Hat Insights was from just Advisor to now adding in those five additional capabilities that I just covered, compliance, drift, vulnerability, patch, and policies. And so the service continues to grow and expand. Now, additionally, with each of these services, they're continually updated and expanding within themselves. So as new vulnerabilities are coming out, new patches or new problems that Red Hat is identifying within our support process, we're adding them into the product. So this isn't just a one-time assessment tool. We're continually adding new value and new findings and new features to Insights. And so we've been seeing great adoption of Insights, right? And so as part of the value of subscription, the customers, there's a low barrier to entry here. And we're seeing the customers that are able to benefit from this. So I'm not going to read both these quotes for you here. I'll leave them up here on the screen for you to read these from two of our customers. But what you're going to see is there's a common theme in both of these. In both of these, from the two users, you're seeing things like it's like having a full-time person or it's adding a second team member. And again, as I mentioned earlier, like why throw more people at the problem or more resources at the problem when you can leverage technology that's already available to you to efficiently help and manage your Red Hat Enterprise Linux infrastructure. This is essentially free automated guidance for you. And we're seeing these direct benefits when it comes to leveraging insights, especially in the efficiency uh, section here. So this is a study that was just published earlier this month. Um, this was by Principal Technologies. 
And this was comparing taking the steps from a manual uh, workflow or established workflow and comparing that directly to the automated detection and remediation capabilities that are available to you in Insights. And we've seen a dramatic increase in terms of the benefits from the stats here. So just to highlight a few of these, right, there's a 96% reduction in time to detect known issues that are impacting these availability performance or stability areas. A minute and 24 seconds to discover vulnerabilities in a 100 VM environment versus over 15 minutes when these are performed manually. Some of these tasks I think is also important to note, especially in the vulnerability space, is these might be done on a regular basis. This might be something that's being done once a week, multiple times per week. And so when we start to look at 15 minutes versus a minute and 24 seconds, this time starts to build up over time, right? So if we can reduce the amount of time that we're doing these repetitive tasks, we can benefit from the technology that's doing these detections, and we can go and mitigate the problems, we're becoming more efficient there. So as I mentioned, Insights isn't just here to help you identify the problem, but we're going to help you address and remediate the problem. So in the same case of vulnerabilities, we saw a 91% increase in the completion time, sorry, decrease in the completion time to address the vulnerabilities here. So again, by using the tools, by using the automation that's available to you, you can become more efficient at mitigating the risk and not repeating these repetitive tasks that are taking away time from your strategic direction. Now, another area, as John's going to demo here in a second, is uh, cloud connectors. So I've been talking about insights and detection capabilities, but if you are a satellite user, um, last year at Summit, we introduced something called cloud connector. And what this does is within your smart management subscription, you're able to not just identify the problems from Red Hat Insights, but you're able to act on them directly from the cloud to your on-premise management software, in this case satellite, to go and act on them here. So John, I'm actually going to pass it over to you for a live demo. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate that. Uh, while I get my system set up here, I got to share my screen. Just want to remind you, we do have the Q&A section here of the webinar. Please go ahead and start asking any questions that you might have. Rob's covered a lot of uh, good information for you already, and then I'm going to kind of put it into practice and show you how this works. So on screen, you should be seeing right now uh, cloud.redhat.com slash insights. I'm using a web browser. I've just got it in full screen mode, which is, you know, why hopefully all you're seeing is the UI itself. At my first look at Insights, it might appear a, a touch overwhelming. There's a lot going on in the screen. But this is the kind of information that Insights is finding for you uh, without any real work on your part. Insights is intended to be easy to set up. As Rob discussed, there's no maintenance to it. And it's really great for people that are just starting their cloud journey or maybe even work, moving workloads to the cloud or over to RHEL for the first time. So I've got in my environment here about 350 some systems that are in my uh, Insights registration. You can see that here right in the dashboard. I get my mouse to work. Uh, on the advisor side, it's showing us that I've got five incidents detected. These incidents are items that are actually affecting your environment right now. A lot of the guidance that we give in the advisor service is proactive. It's telling you about issues that are going to impact your environment, impact your systems, but haven't done so yet. The whole point of advisor is it's got your back. It's going to tell you about best practices and any kind of known issues. So I can start right here by clicking on the five incidents detected, and I can see areas that are actively affecting my environment. So these are things like, hey, I've got some end-of-life versions out of these 350-plus machines registered to Insights. Some of those hosts are actually using software that are no longer uh, supported. So it's actually going to give me a listing of those if I click right into it. This is one of those issues that we can't actually tell you. Uh, yeah, like we can't remediate this for you. We can't create a playbook because it's going to depend on your particular situation. Uh, but if I click into, for example, this satellite 6.4 machine, what it's going to tell me here is the issue that I have is on this host. Uh, not only is uh, satellite is coming up for end of life, open JDK 7 is now end of life for 71 days, Ansible Engine 2.6, 308 days. So it's going to tell you step by step what you need to do to get back uh, into a supported situation. 
if I return back to my incidents, I can also see these are issues like um, a daily cron job fail due to a bug in subscription manager or metadata service. So these are just looking at incidents, things that are actively affecting your system. If I clear those filters, I can take a look and here's all of the issues across my entire environment that we're identifying. So this is the full list of advisor recommendations. If I want to, to help uh, get management support, I can download an executive report of these. It's a PDF file. I actually have one downloaded. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's going to summarize for you the issues by severity, issues by category, as well as the top three recommendations that you're currently hitting. And that's going to give you a quick summary right here at the bottom of the screen. So not only do we have these full listed advisor recommendations, you can see these per system view, so you can go look at individual systems. We also have this concept of topics. It's not just about Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's also about those workloads that you're running. For example, maybe you're moving SQL to the cloud. This could be new territory for you, especially if SQL running on RHEL in AWS or Azure are all new. So I've got topics in here for AWS, Azure, virtualization, satellite, OpenStack, SAP. In my example, I've got a SQL server that's running here, um, and I have a couple topics that I'm, uh, recommendations that I'm tripping specific to SQL Server, including I've got a host where SQL Server is enabled, but it's actually not running. Uh, I've got one that has insufficient requirements. It's not actually meeting Microsoft's recommendations for what the host should be running in terms of CPU and hardware. And then just, hey, I don't have adequate performance. I can put in that tuned profile and I can go ahead and, and get better performance out of SQL Server itself. This enable but not running, this seems like it should be a really simple fix. I'm gonna take a look at it in more detail. I can actually uh, click in, get a little bit more information and I can see that that affects AWS SQL 02. This is a SQL host that I have running in AWS. Uh, it's part of a cluster and one of my nodes actually isn't running. If I wanna fix this, it's as simple as selecting the host and clicking this remediate button. What this is going to do for me is set up a playbook and then my action for this playbook is to just go ahead and start the MS SQL Server service on this one system. When I create this playbook I can go ahead and view the remediation playbook. So here it is. This is a super simple example. I can download this playbook. It's going to open up that YAML file in another window for me. And this is what it's going to create. It dynamically generates it when I click that download button. And what it's saying here is this is the issue. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to connect to the host. We're going to start the SQL Server service. And then as soon as it's started, we're going to run Insights again, and that will clear up the issue. So everything I've just showed you so far is all part of Insights. It's all included in that base value of your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. So if you've already got RHEL, you have access to Insights. There is that additional cloud connector capability that Rob talked about. I have that set up, and what that's done for me is enabled this Execute Playbook button. So Cloud Connector connects my satellite environment to cloud.redhat.com, and it enables me to use Ansible Remote Execution to actually run this playbook. So I can go ahead and click the Execute Playbook button. In this case, my playbook is connected through a satellite that's also running in AWS. And since it's ready, I can execute the playbook on one system. So that goes ahead and starts running that playbook for me. It updates my latest activity here. It's now pending. And if I wanted to go in and actually watch this, I can see uh, this playbook getting kicked off in real time right here through the Insights UI. So I'm not going to go through this at the moment. We'll come back and visit it in a little bit. I do want to talk about some of the additional services that we have inside of Insights. So let's say you've moved your workload over to uh, AWS, SQL Server, and RHEL. You've got everything set up. You've got it running the way you wanted. You put everything in a best practice configuration. Now that you have your system set up the way that you want them, how do you keep them in sync? Our Drift service can help you here. So left-hand navigation bar, I'm going to click on Drift. And they've got two options here, a comparison and a baseline. You can set a baseline for what you expect your systems to look like. 
we go ahead and click in on my baselines. Now, I have one that already exists, but just to give you a feel, I'm going to go ahead and click the Create Baseline button. You have the option to create a baseline from scratch from a series of facts that Insights collects from the hosts, or you can copy an existing baseline. Say, I want to take my 2020 Q3 baseline, and I want to update that one to a Q4, or you can copy an existing system. Maybe I got that that SQL on rail system running in AWS just the way I wanted it, I can actually select that system and I can create a baseline from it. So it's going to go ahead and say, it's going to go ahead and grab all the facts that I have from that specific host and it's going to use that host just like a gold image. You do need to tweak this a little bit because there's certain things such as the NIC card, the MAC address, you're going to want to go in and alter those things because you know they're not going to look exactly the same on all the hosts. You can go in here, remove particular facts if you want to. Uh, so, like, I don't want to include my uh, IPv4 address. I can delete that fact. And if you're looking at this right now and saying, John, I don't want to collect that information at all. I want to make sure that I never send my IP addresses over to Red Hat via Insights. You can do that super easily. You have full control over everything that's collected by Insights. And for something like IP addresses and host names, it's really easy. In the config file, there's an obfuscate option for IP address and a second one for host names. You just click one or both, change them to yes, and it will collect that information. If you need something more uh, specific, like my company's host name is never allowed to leave our domain, you can create a, a YAML-based deny list for those certain terms. So we'll talk about more about that uh, in the resources slide, I believe. Now that I have a baseline, you can create a comparison. Um, I'm going to click this Add to Comparison button. I'm actually going to look at my uh, AWS security baseline here. And then I've got a couple security machines. And one of them in particular, I've got reports of that's been running kind of slow. So I'm going to compare SECO1 and SECO3 and hit submit. So what this is showing me here is a comparison of my baseline and two of my hosts. I do have the option to set a reference point. So I, you know, I expect it to look like this baseline. So I'm gonna click the little star button. It's gonna set that baseline as my reference point. And this is what I expect everything to look at. So you'll see on the right, the individual cells on the table, they're shaded red if there's a difference. My default comparison is looking at everything that's the same, that's different, or incomplete. I'm going to go ahead and remove incomplete, and I'm going to remove same, and I'm going to only focus on the things that are different. Right off the bat, I noticed that on SECO1, it's got about half the amount of memory. So I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe the system was been around for a long time, and it was created when a giga memory was the standard. Well, that's way underpowered nowadays. I need to up that. Or maybe I had a hardware problem. Maybe a DIM died. So I can certainly go take care of that. Uh, SECO1 is also listed as managed by satellite, where both the baseline and SECO3 are not. If I look at my OS kernel version on my baseline, it's a little bit newer. So that's been updated. I do need to patch up most of these systems. Uh, but SECO3 has been updated to 7.8 recently. Maybe I want to delve into a little bit more detail here. I'm going to go ahead and pull SECO1 out. And what I see here next to SECO3 is this little symbol. We have the option for historical data for Drift as well. So earlier today, I did happen to patch this system. I can go in, I'm going to remove my baseline, and I want to know what's changed today since 3 a.m. UTC versus noon UTC. And if I go in here and look, what I can actually see is during those times, curl and libcurl were both updated. I applied a patch to this machine. Uh, maybe something has stopped working as expected. I can go here and get details on exactly what's changed. That historical data is only available for seven days. Insights doesn't keep your data for very long. That's 14 days at the max. Uh, generally speaking, 24 hours, we replace all of the information with a fresh uh, collection from of metadata from the hosts. So that's a quick look at the comparisons. I do want to point out that any of this information, be it in Advisor that we looked at earlier or here in Drift, you can export that out to uh, 
CSV or JSON. I just exported it to a CSV file down here at the bottom. And it's WYSIWYG. It's what you see is what you get. So depending on the comparison on screen uh, is exactly what you're going to export out to a file. Everything in Insights as well is backed by a full suite of APIs. And even if I took this browser out of full screen mode, I grab the uh, URL and I send it via a Slack message or a Google chat message to Rob, he could see the exact same comparison that I'm looking at right now. So the last one I want to take a look at real quick is the ability to support custom needs to suit your business. Maybe you have the need to make sure on all your systems at all time, your firewalls are enabled and running, or you want to make sure that all your public cloud instances have an owner set. We have the policy service within Insights. This policy service is intended for internal policies that your organization completes. You, you can see some of them here on the screen, like I need to make sure uh, if I've got a server that's been running for at least 10 days. Um, if I scroll down, I've got an example here. I'm going to create a copy of it. This is making sure the firewall is enabled. So the whole purpose of this one is I want to make sure at all times that firewall is uh, enabled and it is running. So when I look at my conditional text, I'm going to start it with not because I want to be alerted in the event that this is not true. So facts enabled services contain firewall D and facts running process contains firewall D. So I want it both uh, enabled and running. You can add additional conditions here. So maybe you want to put in an or uh, facts dot and you see that there's a, a type ahead here that shows up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Just giving you an example that it, it is fairly easy for you to go and create these. You've got examples right here on the screen, such as Wireshark, uh, public cloud instances with tag owner. And then when you're done with your condition, you hit that validate button. This is a valid condition, so I click next. I get options to either uh, send an email or send a webhook. We do want to note that in my case, I've been using Insights for a while, so I have already opted into email notifications. If you haven't, you'll have a yellow box here on screen, and that yellow box will say, hey, you need to set up your email notifications. You need to opt into these. We're not going to be able to send them to you unless you basically agree to receive emails from Insights. We're not going to send you anything you haven't agreed to. And that's set up within your profile settings and Insights. Uh, I've already agreed, so I've got the option here to send an email and to also send a webhook. Click Next. Let's review this policy. Uh, it is enabled, set to blue. Here's my conditions, my trigger action, and I click Finish. So what happens here is I will get a uh, email sent to me or a webhook sent to me in the event that I trip this condition. You do in your email options have the capability of setting this to a per server email. So for every individual server that uh, has the firewall turned off or disabled, you would get an email. Uh, or you can do it as a digest where it's going to once a day roll them all together. So this hasn't triggered yet. It'll trigger here in a, a few minutes, and then as soon as it does, I'd start getting emails in my inbox about any servers that have violated this policy. So this ensuring a firewall is just one example of an internal policy. There's a number of them here uh, on the screen, but it's really meant for those use cases where you're like, hey, I, I need to make sure a package is installed and running, or I need to make sure that one is not running, like the Wireshark example that you saw on the creation page. So policies can really help you not only make sure that your systems are set up the way you want them, uh, but to make sure that you're, you have custom policies in place to suit your business needs. I'm going to return real quick to that remediations view. Earlier in the beginning, I had created that SQL Server. I'm just going to go back and take a look real quick. I can see that my latest activity here succeeded. And if I wanted to see what that looked like, I can actually dig right here into the remediation screen. Um, I should be able to see the, uh, the actual playbook, but for some reason it is not showing on my screen right now. That's the magic of demos. Um, it's also visible on the satellite side as well. Uh, but all that did for us is go ahead and turn on the SQL Server service. So if I go ahead and return to the advisor, I go back to topics. What I should see under my Microsoft SQL Server topic is that issue is no longer listed because we've cleared that. We've gone ahead and run a playbook, we've taken an action, and we've turned that SQL service back on. So that's no longer an issue in my environment.
One last thing I want to mention before I turn it back over to Rob, this is a fairly new feature that we've added into Insights itself, and this is this Register Systems button right here on the left. So if you want to know how to get started with Insights, you want to go ahead and uh, register some systems or take a look, this will really help you. There's also a, an Insights Getting Started page with similar information, but from within the Insights UI, you just say, hey, I'm using Subscription Manager or I'm using Satellite or even the public cloud. What's my operating system? RHEL 7, 6, or RHEL 8. Uh, if you're running RHEL 8, Insights is already installed for you, so you, have, uh, you get to skip a step. Uh, if you're doing 7 or 6, you have to install the Insights client. It's part of the base RHEL repo, uh, and then you go ahead and run the registration command. And then if you want to use any sort of automation, you can choose Ansible, Puppet, or No. If you choose Ansible, it's going to give you a playbook. Uh, if you choose No, it's going to give you the individual commands that you can run, so it's super easy to get up and get started with Insights. With that, let's go ahead on to the next page. I'm going to stop my screen share. Please remember to ask any questions that you have in the Q&A section on your screen. For additional resources okay. for Insights, oh, go ahead, Rob. Nope, go ahead. Sorry, John. So for, for additional resources, uh, we've got an executive brief for Insights itself that's available for you, the short URLs on the screen. The general getting started page tells you a lot of that same information I just showed you on the register systems. It tells you how to get up and get started with Insights itself. So if you haven't yet logged on to cloud.redhead.com slash insights, uh, you can go ahead and check out that getting started page. Rob already talked to you earlier a little bit about the couple customers that we had that chatted with one of the, uh, the TAMs about their feedback from using Insights. Again, it's like having another team. It's like having another team member. It's like having somebody look at all that basic stuff that you really know you should do on your systems, but maybe you don't have time to check every each and individual system if you've got a large estate. So you can hear it from them in their own words. And there's also an analyst paper uh, on Insights that was recently released. Principal Technologies Group did a study about the value and the time savings of Insights itself. Rob, anything else you want to add? No, I think you covered most of it, John. Um, I'm just looking at the Q&A here. We got a few questions. Um, so the, the first one that I'm seeing here is, is there an API available for uh, Insights? And John, I think you covered this very briefly. So we do have a public API that spans all the applications that we've uh, talked about today, as well as um, some of the small services like inventory and remediation. And so just to highlight here, we've had a few customers that have leveraged this for their various needs. This might be stuff such as creating custom reports. We've had a few customers that integrated this directly into Splunk, because that's where most of their dashboards or um, daily workflow might be in. So they've brought in the insights information into that. We've also had a few that have integrated the insights remediations as well as the findings within their CI CD pipeline. So as they're pushing, as I mentioned earlier, pushing something towards prod, if they have kind of a check in place, um, they'll have it so it provides back the results. You know, if there's a critical result, it's going to fail proceeding to production and they can go and address that there. So there's been a few integrations that customers have found that have worked well for them in terms of getting insights directly into their existing workflows as well as tooling. And if you're interested in those APIs right from inside of the Insights panel, I didn't go into it in the demo, but there's a documentation link on that left-hand navigation bar. And if you were to click that, uh, API is linked right there, and there's an API listed for uh, essentially every service that we have. So even though I focused heavily on the uh, web UI for Insights, as Rob said, it's fully backed by APIs. See, we have another question here about um, is Insights always running in the background for my host? Uh, so the Insights client that we talked about, we've designed it to have as minimal impact as possible on your host. So it's not a always running background daemon. It's a, literally a crown job that wakes up once per day. Uh, by default, it's 24 hours. It's going to wake up, it's going to do its analysis, and then it's going to turn off. Um, you can do on-demand um, executions of this. If you'd like to do it more frequently, you can change the uh, schedule at which it checks in. Um, but we've designed it so it has a minimal impact on the host itself as well as the network here. Um, John, I'm going to actually pass this one to you. 
Uh, we got a question here. Does remediations work on-prem for VMs um, or cloud, like Azure, AWS, IBM Cloud, et cetera? So I want to explore that question a little bit because I've uh, I glanced at it, what 100% sure what we were looking for. I think one of the things we do want to highlight is all the value of insights is software as a service. So this is only available on cloud.redhat.com. So for accessing insights itself, that portion is not on premise. It's only available as software as a service. But the remediation piece of it, through this cloud connector, I showed it to you briefly during the course of the demo. Um, again, everything that I showed you with insights is part of that rel subscription, except for cloud connector. The execute playbook button is the only visual difference that you'll see. What that does for you is create that connection with your satellite, uh, up to cloud.redhat.com. It's a job that's executed from the satellite itself. It creates that API connection in the background, and then once it's there, um, you assign a user, a service user, or a, a freshly created user for the point of Ansible remote execution. So then when you click that remote ex execution button, it does the remediation to any host that you have. And we don't care if it's on-prem, if it's in the cloud. In the demo I showed you, both my satellite and my uh, SQL server that I used were both in AWS, um, but it doesn't matter what that satellite is. Uh, it could be on-premise, it could be in the cloud, it could be virtualized. Um, we, just, we, we just leverage that satellite connection as a trusted host that has uh, some additional role-based access controls and the permission to do Ansible remote execution. So that will go ahead and run any uh, operation on the hosts within your estate. Looks like we got one and more I should here. Add, I should add on to that, oh. that uh, again, that cloud connector capability, it is part of the smart management subscription. Uh, smart management includes both satellite and the cloud connector. Awesome. Thanks, John. So I'll also take this next one here. So um, does Red Hat Insights work with application monitoring, uh, performance monitoring or APM software? Um, so I would actually put this as Insights is complementary to it. Both of uh, Insights as well as APM software are kind of working in their own little scope here. So your APM software is typically looking at the application itself. Is my business app that might be running my uh, supply chain? Is it up and running? Um, what's the memory threshold? Are we seeing spikes? You know, are our customers running into issues with the application itself? Meanwhile, that application might be running on infrastructure here, right? So it might be running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux that's going to be maybe in a virtualized environment, or that might be running in a public cloud or stuff like that, right? And so there's a lot of things that are under the covers under the application itself, which we need to make sure are working, are patched, and are tuned so that that application can always be available. Because if the infrastructure that's hosting that uh, application isn't available, well, the application is gonna have problems, right? So we wanna make sure that the whole entire stack is running and that it's running efficiently and that it's operational so that our customers and our business gets what they need there. So John, I think that was it for, for questions here. Um, again, I, I think the, the last comment that I'd add here on this slide, um, there's a quick link to go get going, get started with insights. Um, I really just want to emphasize how easy this is to get going, right? As John had highlighted in the remediation uh, assistant that we have there, if you're on rel eight, it's literally one command that you're on. If you're on rel seven or six, there's two of them. You install and you register. Um, so we're not asking you to, to go and install a, a huge application and configure it and tune it and make sure that it's running and connect it, right? Again, this is SaaS, that's all being handled for you. Um, so if you are interested in this, what I would recommend is take a look at the Getting Started Guide, maybe find a, a few handful of systems, whether that's 10 or 100 in your pre-prod environment, install it and see what pops up. Really, that's really the, the interesting thing that I find with Insights is find a few hosts that have been running for a while. Maybe it's a host that you've been having some problems with or you know you spend a lot of time managing and just see what you know once you're registered what what's popping up in advisor what's popping up in um, you know drift for a baseline stuff like that so really being able to explore and see what Red Hat has found for you as we've kind of highlighted here 
It's extra guidance. It's an extra team member. It's using the expertise that we have as Red Hat, helping you support our product here, right? John, anything else that you'd add here? I think that's it. I really appreciate everybody's time and attention coming to the webinar and learning a little bit more about how Red Hat can help you with your Red Hat Enterprise Linux environment, help you manage risk, and improve operational efficiency. So thank you all very much for your time, and we wish you a great day. Thank you.